Hi everybody, okay, welcome back. We are looking today at Jeremy Duff, Elements of New Testament Greek. We're in section 8.2. We're looking today at the verb to be, amy. And in every language that you can possibly imagine, the verb to be tends to be highly irregular. I'm afraid there's no way of getting around this. I think it's because Firstly, it gets used frequently and things that get used change a lot with use to make them easier to say. It's also perhaps because the idea of being is somewhat different philosophically from other actions. I'm not sure about that. Bottom line is we do have some stuff to learn. However, I've got some great news for you. Uh, there are some patterns here and particularly with this coming straight after the deponent verbs, uh, there's not so much new stuff to learn here as all that black daunting table of ink might make it look like. So let's get straight into it. I want to just do the usual thing. I'm going to highlight the patterns for you. We're looking at Duff, page 94 and 95. He's got a great little explanation here. Just look at that. I'm going to take you through a couple of things here. The verb to be uh, is here in the present, future and imperfect tenses. Present tense first. Amy, a, estin, esmen, ester, asin. Notice, please, there is a typo in at least some editions of Duff in the second singular present, where that little circumflex thing, little hat, is missing. It is quite important because it distinguishes the second singular of Amy from the word a, which means if. Um, so you do need to remember that, and it's a shame that Duff hasn't got it here. He has got it in the table at the back, but just scribble it in. Do it in ink, because you'll be glad you did. There's no need to, uh, to uh, worry about doing that, because correcting a book is a smart thing to do. It's a wonder there aren't more typos, because in a book like this, it's so hard to get it right. Anyway, Amy A. Estin, Esmen Esther Asin. Um, you can see here, especially in the plural, you can see some resemblance to luo, can't you? The luo, luois, lue, luomen, luete. Sin. You can see some resemblance there. Uh, the removable new in both those cases, as usual. That's not completely unfathomable, given the luo paradigm that you already know. So that's the present. The future, I will be. The great news here is that the whole package is almost identical to the form you just learned in the previous section. You can see that, can't you? Ruamai, ruwe, ruetai, ruometha, ruesta, ruwantai. Well, here you've got e. Eh, from there. Then you've got the sigma, which you'd expect because it's future, so you can have a sigma suffix. And then you've just got the endings from Ruamai. Except at one point uh, here, there's an epsilon missing. Uh, with Ruamai, it's Ruamai, Rue, Ruetai. Well, here it's SMI, SR, STI. SOMETHA, SESTER, SONTI. But that's not hard to learn, is it, guys? Come on. So once you've learned Ruamai um, in the present tense, you've got uh, SMI in the future tense. OK, now the imperfect. You notice there's no aorist here, as Duff explains, page 95. The past tense of being, um, think I was, naturally implies an action that's extended in time and thus an imperfect tense. It's just not possible to imagine conceptually um, an, an aorist version of that that's not extended in time and therefore the aorist has fallen into disuse and doesn't exist uh, in New Testament Greek. Uh, ermen, es, en, ermen, ete, ersan. Here's where people trip up, of course. Ermen, ermen. Well, um, just goes to show the value of learning the pronunciation correct in the first place, doesn't it? To over-exaggerate, especially these long vowels like O as opposed to O, and E as opposed to E. Well, there it is in the imperfect. You do have a couple of alternate forms here, which are pretty rare, but you, know, you should know about them. OK, the infinitive. Uh, well, good news here. There's no aorist infinitive, um, because to be, again, uh, is, uh, on, only really makes sense with a present tense and the continuous aspect. So a i is the present infinitive. The participle is pretty easy to remember. This one you get for free because if you remember the participle form of luo, well it's luon luontes, well this is just the ending of the verb itself. Instead of having luon and luontes, uh, untying and untying and so on, 
you cut the distinctive stem of Luo and you just have the ending. And of course, again, there's no aorist participle, so you get that one for free as well. So I'm inclined to say, yeah, you look at this and you think, oh, what a nightmare. It's not that bad, guys. Uh, and the mixture of good news and bad news is you're going to come across this all the time, especially uh, the present and the imperfect. Uh, the future, obviously, you come across as well. So uh, whether you think that's bad news because, oh, it's a nightmare, you've got to learn it, or good news because once you've learned it, it will be worth having done so, and all the text you keep bumping into will remind you of it. That's up to you whether you're a glass half full or a glass half empty person. But that's section 8.2. There are some... Uh, questions, practice questions right there, practice 8.2, maybe I'll do a couple of those in the next video, and then we'll move on to the nouns of confusing gender. Oh my goodness. Well, we'll look at that in section 8.3 in a couple of videos' time. Keep working at it, guys. God bless you. 20 minutes a day, 30 minutes a day, five, six days a week, and we'll have you reading the New Testament in Greek in no time at all. Bye for now.